Welcome to the next Champion Data Review where we'll finally be taking a look at the Scorpion XO 1400 Air. This is a top sport touring helmet from Scorpion and we'll finally be answering the question of how does it perform out on the road. How? Well, we've sent our test rider on his way, measured the Scorpion's performance, and he's come back with lots of interesting data, so stay tuned to find out the results. Sebastian from Champion Helmets here, and the Scorpion XO 1400 Air is the top sport touring helmet from Scorpion. Bringing a great set of options from carbon fiber to fiberglass outer shells, the 1400 Air does definitely turn up the heat on its more premium and mid-priced competitors. Not only does it tick all the standard sport touring boxes, like having a drop-down sun visor, but it also includes Scorpion's AirFit system, which lets you get your ideal fit in the cheeks. But more on that later on. So with a recommended retail price of about 300 euros or 360 US dollars, the helmet will be competing with the Nolan N87 Plus, HJC F70, Icon Airflight, Bell Qualifier Deluxe, and the Shark Squall 2.2. So let's dive into that data. As we get started with our review and road test, don't forget to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with our latest champion data reviews and road tests, where we take helmets out on the road, measure their performance, and bring you the facts. The XO 1400 Air is coming composed of Scorpion's TCT fiberglass composite and total of three outer shell sizes, which is already great to see. The shell size distribution means that the first size covers XS to M, the next is L, and the last is XL to XXL. The XO 1400 Air is also available in a carbon fiber outer shell version, with the same shell size distribution. The helmet fastens with a double D-ring chin strap and uses an intermediate oval head fit. For safety, it has been sharp tested and it earned 4 of 5 stars, which is a solid score. For weight as well, the Scorpion helmet does very well since it comes in at about 1,450 grams or 3 pounds 3 ounces, which is excellent, and the carbon fiber version does even better coming in at 1,280 grams, which is a little over 100 grams lighter, which is really great. So compared to the competition, we're looking at a helmet that comes in lighter than the Nolan N87 Plus and the Shark Squall 2.2 by quite a bit, and it even beats some premium competition such as the Shoei GTR2 since it is 30 grams heavier and the Bellstar Deluxe MIPS which is 70 grams heavier. So some very interesting results already, but we'll have to refrain from a final verdict until we see how it does out on the road. Next we come to the visor which is going to offer a fantastic field of view and is coming pinlock prepared with the Max Vision insert in the box. For an added touch, the carbon fiber version of the helmet does include a dark smoke visor as well, just like with the Scorpion R1 Air racing helmet. But both versions will include an integrated sun visor operated by a slide on the side of the helmet, and to remove the visor the process is very easy since all you need to do is set it to the fully open position and pull down on the release levers on either side. To remount it, all you need to do is line it back up with the track, snap it into place, and you're ready to go. For comfort, the 1400 Air is also bringing the best that Scorpion can bring with their Quick Wick 3 internal liner. This means that the liner is removable, washable, moisture wicking, and antibacterial. One of the unique features of the 1400 Air is that it also includes the Scorpion AirFit system. This means that if the helmet isn't quite snug enough or the cheek pads loosen over time, that you can pump air into a set of bladders on either side to tighten things up again. But we'll cover that soon. To remove the interior, you first have to take out the cheek pads with a set of snaps on either side, and then once these are removed, you have a set of noise isolators on either side as well, which will fill in the speaker pockets. Lastly, to take out the top liner, you have snaps at the back with a set of inserts in the forehead, and the liner is going to be comfortable and plush, and it covers the basics. Inside now, the helmet has a number of EPS grooves to promote airflow, and there are also speaker pockets again for your choice of system, which you can pick up at a discount in our helmet bundle deals. Inside the chin bar, you also have that red pump, which allows you to inflate the bladders on either side, which is a clever and effective solution to the fitment issue. To let the air out again, you have a small silver button that will act as a release. Finally, we come to the helmet's vents. In the chin, we're getting an adjustable inlet with multiple positions, while the brow has a single large scoop. In the back, by that stylized point, we also have a set of three exhausts spaced around the spoiler. But how will these perform in the real world when measured? Well, we've now come to the most interesting part of our review, where we've given the helmet to our rider, equipped him with our measuring instruments, and sent him on his merry way. So let's take a look at that data. As we head into our champion road test, just a quick reminder of our setup. On the left, we have a white monitor showing the helmet's internal temperature in degrees Celsius from a thermometer placed between the helmet's EPS and inner liner. In the middle, we have a decibel meter showing the helmet's internal noise level 
from a microphone placed near our rider's ear. On the right, we have a telephone showing the day's average airspeed on the helmet from a bike-mounted anemometer. Lastly, on the dash, we have our rider speed and the exterior temperature. We performed our test at 130 km per hour or 80 miles per hour on long stretches of a highway. So how did these three vents fare? While testing, the day's exterior temperature came in at about 16 degrees Celsius or 61 Fahrenheit, while the internal temperature of the 1400 air was actually the same. So it was also 16 degrees Celsius, which was certainly impressive. This means it actually beats almost all of our mid-tier competitors since the Airflight, F70, and 87 Plus on the Squall 2.2 all came in a degree hotter to the outside. Looking at the premium competition, the Scorpion actually also beats quite a few of them as well since it matches up with the HJC R70 Carbon, but the Bellstar Deluxe still comes out on top as the best ventilating sport touring helmet. For noise, we were also very impressed with the Scorpion since it came in at the 100 decibel mark once more beating the Icon, Shark, Nolan, and HJC F70 by a comfortable margin. Though here it must be mentioned that the HJC I70 still came out on top for entry-level helmets with a result of 99 decibels, and both the Showy GTR2 and the HJC R70 Carbon still hold the title of quietest sport touring helmet with their 97 decibel results. During our test, our rider found the helmet to be about average. It wasn't uncomfortable, but it wasn't bringing the same level of features as we'd expect in our premium helmet but this is fair considering the helmet's price, and it is still a great entry to mid-tier to entry-level helmets since the liner does feel good against the skin, and there isn't really very much to complain about. Before we move into our final rankings, just a quick word on the helmet's features. Overall, it does quite well for this category since it is bringing the touring basics, and this means we're looking at speaker pockets, quick-release cheek pads, and a glasses-friendly fit. The finishing is of a fair quality, but the airfit system does mean it offers a fair number of liner features with its customizability. Now, with all our data collection over with, let's see how many stars the helmet managed to earn. For material, since the Scorpion is coming in three outer shell sizes with a fiberglass outer shell, it earns three and a half stars. For a weight of 1,450 grams, it also earns a decent four stars. And since the visor is coming pinlock prepared with the insert in the box, the helmet earns four stars, while the 100 decibel result earns it another four. For airflow with no difference to the outside, the 1400 Air earns 4 stars again, and as far as comfort since the liner was a bit more bare, it earned 3 stars. Lastly, for features, since the helmet mostly focused on covering the basics, it earned 2 stars. Overall, this means that it comes out with an average of 3.5 stars at 12 euros per star, which is an excellent value for money result, and shows that it is a great option for beginner riders. But we still need to consider how it scores when we put it in perspective with other sport touring competitors. We compared and ranked the XO 1400 Air against the rest of its sport touring competition based on their average stars and value for money. Once ranked, we gave out an additional price quality bonus based on our formula to more accurately capture the level of value that you're getting in the helmet. The Scorpion managed to come in 6th, which is excellent, and this earned it a bonus of 2.2. This means that for a final score, the helmet comes in at 6.7, which is still a very strong result. This means that it beats most of its price competitors and that it is coming in close to the Shark Spartan GT Carbon, though it isn't quite able to beat it. But this is a very interesting result nonetheless and very positive overall. With our data collected and scores given, we have a very intriguing outcome for the Scorpion XO 1400 Air. The helm brings a strong set of starter features while also being able to deliver on performance and the touring basics. Now, if you liked the video, make sure to subscribe for more champion data reviews and road tests like these, and let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget, we also include several bundle deals with a helmet with extra visors or comp systems. I'm Sebastian from Champion Helmets, and see you next time.